experiments uh, is the only research method that we can use to identify cause and effect relationships between variables. And the reason for that is because in an experiment, a researcher can manipulate one variable, or in other words, it can assign uh, a certain variable to a person, and then they can measure the effect of that variable, how that variable affects the person. So the variable that the experimenter manipulates or assigns to somebody is called the independent variable, and the variable that we're measuring, measuring the effect of the independent variable, is called the dependent variable. So for an, as an example, a professor wants to know if the speed of his lecturing has an effect on student learning. So he decides uh, he's got two Psych 101 courses. He's going to do a slow speed lecture in one of the courses, and he's going to do a fast paced lecture in the other course. And then he's gonna compare the average exam scores from the two classes to see which class performed better. So what is the independent and the dependent variable? Now you can pause it if you want to think about that for a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on. So for the independent variable, you can ask yourself, well, what are the participants in this experiment being exposed to? Or what is the researcher uh, exposing them to? Well, the answer to that is they're being exposed to different speeds of lecturing. So the speed of lecturing would be the independent variable. And then we think that will have an effect on what? What's the dependent variable? What are we gonna measure? We're going to measure their exam scores. And we're gonna see if the average exam scores in those two classes are different. That will tell us if the speed of lecturing has an effect on student learning. Now you'll see a extra question I have on the slide uh, right at the bottom. It says, should students be allowed to choose which course they want to participate in? Well, the reason uh, I ask that is because it's an important concept related to good experimental design. And the concept I'm talking about is called random assignment. I'm gonna uh, look at this example a little further so you can see why random assignment is so important. So here's uh, our experiment. We've got the independent variable is lecture speed, and there's two versions of that independent variable, slow speed and a fast speed. And we're gonna measure the average exam scores for students in both of those classes. So let's just say we let students pick which class they wanted to be in. We told them uh, before the school year started that uh, they could take the slow paced or the fast paced version and we let them pick, right? And then at unit one, they take their first exam and let's just say the average exam score for the slow paced lecture class was 80%. And let's say the average exam score for the fast paced lecture class was uh, 68%. Now, it might be easy to, to assume that uh, it was the slow lecture speed that caused higher exam scores. But we have to be really cautious now. Uh, and the problem is because we didn't randomly assign students to this class or this class. Remember, uh, in this scenario, we let students choose which class they wanted to be in. The problem with that is, uh, and this is just one example, is that students who are really serious about getting good grades might be more likely to take the slow-paced lecture course because they want to make sure they understand things well, they have time to write notes down really well. So what you have maybe in this class is a lot of highly, oops, highly motivated students. And that's why a lot of them flocked that class. Well, highly motivated students 
do lots of things that might be different from unmotivated students. And maybe we had a, a lot of unmotivated students to this class because they were thinking, you know, I don't really care that much about school, and if this guy so quickly, that means we can get out of class early. And so what you have now are two classes with different types of students in them. And you look at the result, and this class did better for 80%, which is 12 percentage points higher than the average score in the other class. Is that because, did this class do better because of the slow lecture? Or was it because, or was it because they had highly motivated students in that class? And those students not only took good notes and listened carefully, but those students also do other things outside of class that maybe cause them to do better on the exams. Like the amount of time they spend studying at home is probably different from this group of students. So we don't really know now what's causing the slow paced lecture class to perform better than the other class. So if we could redo the experiment, which we should in this case, because it's not done very well, what we would do would be randomly assign students to either the slow paced or fast paced lecture course. We don't give students um, a choice in the matter. Therefore, we should have a pretty good mix of students in both classes. Some are highly motivated, some are lowly motivated, some are average motivation. But the point is now these two classes are, should be really similar to each other, with one exception. The, the only major difference between the classes now is that the rate of lecture. And now, if the results turned out like this, we could be more confident that it was the speed of lecturing that caused this group to perform better because we'd be more confident that it, it didn't have to do with the, the type of students that were in that class. Because we randomly assigned students, we should have pretty similar classes in terms of student motivation and things of that nature. So that's why random assignment is so important in experiments.